Welcome to the Social University Podcast. We are so glad you're joining us today because we want to help business owners, entrepreneurs, and people just like you who want to build their business online. Listen, if we can do it, you can do it. So let's go. Is your social media presence representing your company as well as it could be? Today, we're going to take a look at that and find out. We're going to talk about auditing and making sure that you have what you need in your profiles and on your about you section of your different social media platforms. And let's go ahead and get started. Um, I like to do planning and uh, preparation in January because I think it's a great reset for the year. Last week, we talked about strategies and you know back to the basics classics. This this week, we're going to talk about um auditing, resetting your profile, making sure you're ready for the new year. So first and foremost, you need to make sure about all your profiles. You might be surprised at how many clients we we talk to who don't realize they have more than one Facebook page. They don't realize they have more than one LinkedIn page. So one of the first things I can recommend for you is to create a spreadsheet for all your profiles and pages and That way, as you search on each platform, you can check to see if your company name is number one correct, if it's something that you yourself set up, and um, make sure you don't have any duplicates or spam. There's so much spam, and there's so many hackers now. You need to check this on the regular because somebody could have a spoof of your page, and you don't even know it until you go look on the platform to see what's there. Um, number two, you want to check your username and your URLs on every platform. We are Stay Social You across all platforms, which makes it easy to find us everywhere. It would be weird for me to have my name as one of our URLs on one platform and then social media specialist on one platform and then social media management. It's just it needs to be consistent. So if you're going to be um, Becky Makes Cupcakes on Facebook, you need to be Becky Makes Cupcakes on on every platform you choose to have a presence on instead of cupcakes made by Becky. It's confusing and people are easily confused. And if you're a big Donald Miller fan, you know, if you confuse, you lose. If people get frustrated or they're not sure about what's going on, they're out. So make it as simple as you can by making sure your URLs, um, your web, the what's in your website bar and your names match across all of your platforms. That's just good. That's good for your branding too. Okay, number three, you're going to check your profile and cover shots on every platform. That means your headshot, is it new? Does it look like what you look like right now? It should. People should be able to look at that headshot on LinkedIn and then see you at a networking function and know that you're the same person. Make sure your covers and your your thumbnails, your video thumbnails are also up to date and reflecting your current branding and your current face. Uh, Covers, there's just about everything as a cover. LinkedIn, Facebook have covers. Uh, Pinterest has a cover. Of course, on Instagram, it's just your profile pic. Uh, TikTok is just your profile pic. But make sure they're consistent. The same picture on all the different platforms. The same cover art, or at least similar cover art, so that people can take one look at it and they know that it's you. And that it's you from this year instead of you from 20 years ago. No glamour shots, please. And for the love of Pete, Stop using images that are not you. Even if it's um, you and your husband, not that he's not great, but he's not you. It needs to be you, not your pet, not your baby, not your favorite child out of the 12 that you have. You, it needs to be you. So um, not trying to uh, speak ill of the husband or the pet or the favorite child, but it needs to represent you. It's your business. It's your livelihood. Make sure that that picture represents you well. Okay, number four, check your branding. Does your logo need an update? Um, we did a whole one, a whole session on just this recently. And when I say recently, I want to say November. We can include a link back to that blog post in these notes so that you can go refer to it about how to know if you need new branding or how to know if you need a new logo. Just make sure that the branding is in place. Now, there are exceptions to that. Like if you're posting a happy Veterans Day or happy Memorial Day, that never needs a logo on it. You need to be respectful and just let it be what it is. But if you're posting information like a testimonial, it needs your logo on it. It should have your branding on it. People should be able to look at your Instagram account at a glance and get that branding 
immediately, immediately. So make sure that your branding is consistent across all platforms. Okay, number five, please make sure to complete your Facebook and LinkedIn profiles. LinkedIn really wants you to complete your profile. Every time you log in, it'll ask you, what about this? What about this? If you haven't filled out your education, it'll ask you about it. If you haven't filled out any awards, it'll say, do you have any awards? They really want it done. Facebook cares less, but make sure it's complete. And when I say complete, I I mean, you need to have a a functional title or a functional what's in it for me statement on your LinkedIn. The very best real estate on your LinkedIn profile is that title right under your name. So you can tell people you're the CEO or the VP or you're in charge of sales or marketing, but I like to use the what's in it for me statement so people understand what you bring to the table. Um, if you go look at our LinkedIn page, it says something like most people, most businesses struggle with social media. We're here to make it easy and affordable. That's it. That's all it says. I want it to be streamlined. I want it to be simple so people understand what we do. You should also, on your profiles on Facebook and LinkedIn, make sure that you link back to your actual business page. Again, I'm kind of surprised at how many people will, especially on Facebook, it's much worse on Facebook. They'll say, oh, I'm self-employed and I, um, I work for, let's say you're a realtor and I work for whichever company. And there's a link there to the master realtor page that has a billion followers instead of your personal page. Why would you do that? Make sure it's linking back to your own business. Just like on your profile for LinkedIn, make sure when you list your work history that those links are active. Don't have a page for your own business on LinkedIn, make one. It's important that you make one. Also, it's very helpful for your SEO. So that's something you want to tune into. Just That's a huge pet peeve for me is to go to somebody's profile when I'm trying to find their business page, especially if their branding is inconsistent and you click on the link and it doesn't take you anywhere. It takes you to an empty page that says self-employed. Nope, absolutely not. Um, Check your contact information for accuracy. Is your phone number up to date? Is your email current? Is it the email that you want publicized? Make sure that that information is easily and readily available. People don't have a ton of patience. And if they can't find how to get you, they're not going to get you. So give them each opportunity as easily as you can and as streamlined as you can. And you need to you need to cater to the people who are looking for you. If your audience is over 55, you have to have a phone number. Those folks want to pick up a phone. If your audience is under 25, you have to have an email or a chat feature so that that audience can communicate with you better. Cater to your audience for their method of communication, but be accessible to all people who are, who might be looking for you. And when I say that, I mean email, you uh, website URL, email URL, and phone number. Just make it as easy as possible. And of course, you want to check your um, privacy settings. Make sure they're as secure as possible. I am going to do a video this week about uh, the seriously chronic issue we're having right now with hackers and spammers, which is just nuts. Um, I'm doing that this week as a tip of the week. If you subscribe to our newsletter, you get it. There's no charge. It'll come right to your inbox. But there's some things you need to know that you need to do in order to protect yourself there. And we're going to get into it this week. So check your privacy settings. Also check your birthday. Nobody needs to know the year you were born. Again, it's a security issue. I'm very funny. I don't show my birthday to anybody Um, Yes, Facebook ratted me out a few years ago. People know it's my birthday. That's fine. They don't have to know the year. Again, it's a security issue. And I like to use birthdays as a clean house. Um, So every Facebook gives you notifications. Hey, it's this person's birthday. So I look at those every day. And if it's someone I don't communicate with or someone I don't know uh, in real life or someone I'm not familiar with, I use that opportunity to unfriend them, which really, really doesn't sound great when you say it out loud, but you don't want to have a bunch of weird folks who you don't know connected to you and getting your personal information on Facebook. And that just gives you an opportunity to check them one at a time instead of trying to go through a thousand connections, which takes forever. So it's a simple, easy way you can kind of go through once a week and look and see who you're friends with. And do you want to continue to maintain that relationship online? Okay. Number six, you want to check the about section on each platform. Your branding should be consistent. You want to have the same 
call to action, the same mission statement on Facebook that you do on LinkedIn. It needs to be the same, the same wording. You need to review and optimize it if it needs it or if possible. A lot of business owners kind of get in their own way and they um, it's very clear to them, but it doesn't make sense to the people they are targeting. So even if you have to grab a friend who, of course, your friends know what you do, a colleague, another person to take a look at it to say, does this make sense? Do that and be open to feedback. Um, you know, nobody wants to hear their babies ugly, but th that's how you fix it. You have to be open to the feedback. Um, verify your contact information and your action items. Again, is your email accurate and correct? Is it an email that you want representing your company? And when I say is it an email you want representing your company, make sure it's branded. Gmail has enough business without yours. Make sure it's your URL. Our like mine is Karen at your social you. That is my email. That is the way to reach me. That's the, our branded email that's on everything. That's, you know, it wouldn't make sense for me to have a Gmail listed. Um, make sure that your website's correct. Make sure that your phone number is correct. We have have make sure your hours of operation are correct. COVID messed up a lot of um, hours of operation. And I'm shocked at how many businesses didn't go back in and correct it. They're just still listed as Make sure it's right. Check all of the information. Um, go ahead and um, all the listed links, make sure that they go where they need to go. Again, in your profile, in your about section on all of your platforms, click through and make sure those links are correct. We've had broken links before. It happens. It happens to everybody. It's embarrassing when a customer points it out. Hey, I clicked on this link. It didn't go anywhere. Yikes. Make sure it goes where you want it to go and complete your entire summary on LinkedIn. That is just priceless real estate. It's your opportunity to tell people exactly what you do with your own words, especially keywords. And again, LinkedIn is super Google friendly. So make sure you're completing that information so that people have a complete understanding of what your organization and what you specifically bring to the table so that you can. Um, really, really tap into that keyword section. Um, again, Google is very friendly to LinkedIn. They favor, they tend to favor LinkedIn and Twitter. Yeah, I'm not going to call it X. I'm going to call it Twitter. So make sure that those words are representing you well. And LinkedIn has a robust search engine on their own. So if you're looking for social media management, our company should pop up just based on the summary. Okay, number seven. Check your hashtags. This is something that should be done quarterly, not annually. But if you only do it once a year, for the love of Pete, do it. You should have representations of three varieties of hashtag. You should have those that are broad that in, um, engage on a higher level, like hashtag social media life or social media manager that have a ton of engagement. You need the medium ones that are more unique to what you do, like hashtag social media. Uh, agency or social media management, because that's unique to us. And then those that are specific to your company, hashtag stay social, hashtag care in Toronto, very specific to you. So three versions of hashtags, but make sure that your base, your core hashtag use, they're up to date. And I am begging you, check them all. Again, with hackers and spammers, people will squat on a hashtag and there are certain topics in this world you don't want associated with your business. Adult topics, you know what I'm talking about. Make sure that those hashtags represent you well. And we have customers all the time who will use hashtags they think are perfectly innocent that are not. And we have folks who will use like the hashtag, hashtag love. It gets millions of hits on Instagram, but it's not what you're looking for. It's not, I promise you, it's not what you're looking for. And it's so broad, it's going to make you almost impossible to find. So quit messing around, hashtag, you know, Quit messing around. Is it, stop making them up as you go. Check them all and make sure that they're exactly what they need to be. You're using their correct number on each platform. You're using them on the platforms that require them and that they're functional on the platform where you are. Check your hashtags. Um, number eight, check your insights and analytics. Every single platform has a version of insights and analytics where you can go look and see what is working and what's not working. And I'm not... I'm, I will very cautiously tell you abandon a platform. It's that's difficult 
for me too. When you have done all this work, you don't want to abandon it. But if it's if you're spending two or three hours a week on Pinterest and you're getting no engagement and you're spending less time on Instagram and you're getting a ton of engagement, you need to know that. You need to know, take a look at your Google Analytics and see what terms people are searching to get to you. What social media platforms are they clicking through to get to you? You have to check that stuff to see what's working so you can repeat it. Uh, If you need to delete a platform or post less on a platform, this is how you know that is by checking your analytics. You also want to check for your best and worst performing posts so you can duplicate the success of the best posts and eliminate the crash and burn of the worst posts. And a lot of times stuff that you think will do really well doesn't do so great. So don't repeat it. If this series that you started, this Q&A series isn't working, it pull the plug. Make sure you're doing what's working as you continue to move forward. Oh, my apologies. Um, okay. So the very next thing you want to do is uh, number nine. We're on number nine. Review your content calendar. That is exactly what we're going to get into next week. I'm going to walk you through because there's a lot of information there. And content calendars tend to um, be a little bit confusing if it's something you've never done before. So I'm going to walk you through the process to create your own content calendar, your own content pillar so that you can turn around and put that to work for you. But review your content calendar. It is possible to. it is possible to redo those content calendars annually because you're obviously not going to use, you know, Valentine's posts in November. It makes sense to use that kind of stuff in February. You see where I'm going. It's okay for, to repeat seasonal content, but you do want to make sure that it's functional for you. Um, number 10, check out your competition. It's okay to check them out. Don't dwell on it. Uh, checking out your competition is, um, it can be overwhelming and you don't, nobody needs to invite, um, imposter syndrome into their life. And I will look at something somebody else is doing and be like, oh yeah, why aren't we doing that? Serve yourself because a lot of times you do want to see what your competition is doing, but you don't want to get caught in the trap of comparing yourself to your competition because they may be a year ahead of you. Compare yourself to you. How far have you grown since last year? But yes, it's a good idea to know what your competition is doing. So do take a look at it, but don't stay there. Number 11, you want to review your follow and clean them up remove or unfollow. And when I say that groups, I mean groups. If you're in a group that doesn't make sense, get rid of it. If you are in a group that has a lot of spam content, opt out. Again, it needs to work for you. And the only way for you to know that is to take a closer look at it to see if it's benefiting you. And then of course, um, seriously, at least once a year, you need to check your social media icons on your website Make sure you have social media icons on your website and make sure when you click on them, they go where they need to go. Your LinkedIn icon, if you have a business page, needs to go to your business page instead of your profile. Make sure that's where it's going. And um, you'd be surprised at how many Google Plus icons are still on websites because people don't ever look at it. They don't think about it. So you can also use that opportunity to check your contact information on your website and make sure it's accurate and up to date so that people can easily find you and reach out to you. That is it. Those are the steps to self audit to make sure you are putting your best foot forward and that um, folks are seeing what you want them to see. Please join us again next week when we talk about how to create a content calendar for your year so that you can be prepared to move forward. It's no fun to be in the middle of a Tuesday at four o'clock and go, oh, no, I haven't posted anything today stressful. And as a business owner, you do a lot of things for a lot of people. So you want to make sure that you're prepared in advance. Please let us know if you have any questions. You can always DM us. You can always comment on these posts. We do monitor these. And until next week, I'm Karen Taradis with Social You, and I'm here to help. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for the Social University podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media at Stay Social U. That's the letter U. And we will talk to you next week. Remember, you've got this.